Hey guys, this is Mr. Mitchell. Today we're going to be talking about elastic materials and specifically how to calculate elastic force. So on this page you see just a handful of different examples of elastic materials. Up in this corner over here we got a guy shooting a slingshot, so we got some rubber bands here. Speaking of rubber bands, here's a rubber band ball. And then we also um, have some springs here that this guy's installing on a car suspension system. So just a couple examples to get us started with. Uh, in terms of elastic materials in general, what is, ex is it exactly that makes a material elastic? So an elastic material is defined as anything that can be bent, stretched, or compressed, and return to its original shape uh, or position when it's released. So it's something that we can bend and then we'll kind of naturally go back to its original position. So energy is actually stored in these materials because they've been forced to change shape or position. And so all that energy I used to bend the material is now stored inside of it so that when I let it go, now it's going to bounce back and that energy is released. Um, all of these elastic materials have this thing called an elastic constant, which uh, in science we designate with the letter K. The letter K represents the elastic constant. So the elastic constant is just a number that tells how difficult a material is to stretch or compress. So the higher the elastic constant is, the more difficult it is to kind of bend that material, compress it down. So uh, the elastic constant, again, is just a way to kind of put numbers to this. And so we can understand, you know, is this really difficult to compress or is it very easy to, to stretch or compress? Every single material is going to have an elastic constant and they're all unique. So um, a rubber band has a different elastic constant than a spring does. A spring has a different elastic constant than a bungee cord. They're all unique to the materials because they're defining how difficult the materials are to bend or stretch. In terms of finding the elastic constant, we actually did this in our lab already without you ever actually calling it the elastic constant. Um, the elastic constant can actually just be calculated by finding the slope of the force versus stretch graph. And that's what we graphed in our investigating elastic materials lab. So you looked at several different materials and we put kind of graphs together and found, uh, we did a linear regression to figure out what the slope of that line was. Well, the slope is actually the elastic constant. So when you were asked to calculate that slope, you were actually finding the elastic constant, which defines how difficult materials are to stretch or compress. So it's probably likely when you did this lab, you saw that the rubber band had a much lower elastic constant than say the bungee cord or the spring did. That's because the rubber band is a whole lot easier to stretch than those two other materials. Uh, as far as calculating elastic force, it's a pretty generic equation, follows the same steps that we've been doing in the past, but um, we're just going to be multiplying two numbers. So uh, the elastic force is actually calculated <coughs> excuse me, by taking the elastic constant and multiplying it by whatever the stretch distance is. And if you think about it, really, we said that the elastic constant is equal to um, the force divided by the stretch distance because that was the graph that we came up with before but the, you know that's that's a little more detailed than we need to worry about right now so here's an example problem Jacob stretches a bungee cord a distance of 0.4 meters to hold a mattress on the roof of his car if the cord has an elastic constant of 12 how much force must Jacob apply so we start with our givens over here right we know that we're given the um, elastic constant which is 12 and we're also given the stretch distance which is 0 0.4 meters. So we go to our equation, right? This is very straightforward because there's only one that we've just been introduced to. The elastic force is equal to the elastic constant times the stretch or compression distance. And now we come down here and we plug everything in. So force, oops, force equals elastic constant times stretch distance, which is equal to 12, because that's what our elastic constant is up here times 0 0.4 meters. So that's what our stretch distance was. So when we do that math, we end up with a force of 4.8. And remember that force is measured in newtons. Okay. So the last step would be to write that in a sentence. So we'd say Jacob must apply 4.8 newtons of force. So notice that that's also the force that he has to apply. It's not necessarily the force that the elastic material is bouncing back with, but it's also the same as the force he applies to stretch it or compress it. Okay? 
So uh, there, there's this other concept called the elastic limit. So anytime we, we stretch out a material, we know that there's a point where we don't want to stretch it anymore. All right, so you've probably experienced this with a rubber band, for example. You know, you stretch it out on your wrist, you stretch it out on your wrist, eventually it breaks and that snaps you in the hand and that kind of hurts. So um, what we're talking about there is the elastic limit. All right, the elastic limit is just defined as a point at which the material will no longer return to its original shape and no longer behaves like an elastic material. So a rubber band, for example, when I stretch it till it breaks, it can't go back to its original shape anymore. So I've reached its elastic limit. It happens sometimes um, with springs. If you take a spring and you stretch it way too far, the spring ends up getting all stretched out and doesn't look quite as nice as it did before. Maybe you've done that with a slinky in your lifetime, right? You pull it too far and now the, string, the slinky's all bent out of shape and it can't go back. So that's reached its elastic limit. So the elastic limit is the point where um, you know, I go past it and things won't return back to normal. All right, so that's something most of the time we want to avoid stretching things past their elastic limit. So hopefully that was uh, helpful for you guys. Um, we're going to be investigating elastic potential energy a little bit further later, but, um, you know, this is kind of a good starting point for us for now. All right, have a good day.